Fox up here, subscribe here. All right. And if you have a Twitter that you want to use, or have right you can... Here, yeah, I don't use Twitter. I got in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Pete Warden, head of the Breakthrough Starshot program. Uh, here again for Ask an Expert, the show where we take questions from you about the topics we cover at SU and about our adventure into interstellar space. It's a bird, it's plane. No, it's a bird, I guess. <laughs> All right. James Holly. Straight up the best idea uh, of 2016. I think it's the best idea of the last few decades, but you know, we can argue about that. Let's stop spending money on weapons and spend it all on this instead. Great idea. Well, now let me talk a little bit about, you know, the Starshot. The, uh, conventionally, the way you did things in space, you had a big rocket, you burned fuel, and, and you exhausted the fuel uh, using the rocket equation. Uh, if we do that calculation of, of how we send something to these huge speeds, we need an unbelievable amount of fuel. The other idea is let's keep the fuel on the ground. Yeah. So you use the, the energy and light to push on the, the chip. Well, the chip is so small, you, you can't get much light on it, so it has a sail, uh, just like a sailboat. Uh, that uh, In this case, the sail would be about 10 feet across. And so the laser pushes on that, the laser stays on the ground, pushes on it for a few minutes, and accelerates it really fast in the direction of the star system we want to go to, which in this case is the nearest one, the Alpha Centauri system. You know, the, there's a lot of questions about why would you spend money to send probes, you know, at some horrendous distance into space? Uh, it's a good question, uh, but I'm a scientist, and I think the best answer to this is Stephen Hawking, uh, when he was asked, you know, when, we, when he announced our Breakthrough Listen effort, why are we spending money on listening for alien signals? And I think his answer was, we are alive, we are intelligent, we must know. So that's the question here, is there is a horizon. To be human is to want to know what's beyond that horizon. The, the horizon I see now, and, I, and, I, and my colleagues see, is the horizon of, you know, we're, we're in most of the solar system, we need to look beyond to the next solar system. That's the next horizon. The exciting thing about Project Starshot is that this century we're going to begin to step as a species and explore not just our own solar system, but the nearby stars. We're at the beginning to become a galactic species. All right. A bird, a bird, a Twitter bird from uh, Ed Wilson. Star chips, uh, what powers the transmitters for returning images? Well, I'm glad you asked the question. I have a star chip right here. It's a little tiny thing right here in the corner. Well, the cool thing about the star chip is that is our technology can pack everything in a giant spacecraft, or most of the things, uh, except for people, uh, into a really small piece of, uh, you know, piece of technology. This is an amazing thing that's been, you know, it, it wasn't funded by the space programs. It was funded by all the people that build, you know, iPhones and Apple Watches and, you know, Google phones and so forth. This technology makes it possible for us to access uh, the nearest stars. But on the back of it, can't see the back, but uh, is, a, is a little coating. Now, this coating uh, doesn't have anything active in it, but if we sent it to, into space, it would have a radioisotope. Uh, probably uh, americium, which is in your smoke detectors, or maybe plutonium, although that's a little scarier to people. And the, that produces a small bit of power that actually powers the chip, keeps it war at warm in interstellar space, which is only a few degrees above uh, absolute zero. So the power system is already a mature technology, which we think we can use for the star chip. The bird. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll get the bird. <laughs> I even like the sound of star chips. The idea is great, but when do they blast me with lasers to the next, uh, the, the next star? Well, first of all, the way we're going to do this is this is a huge amount of power, and we accelerate this chip for a couple minutes, which is 60,000 Gs. So I doubt if you can take 60,000 Gs uh, right now. Uh, second, you know, you weigh more than a gram. I certainly do, uh, and uh, that we would need you know, a million times more energy than uh, to get you accelerated. So this isn't a technology that, that we see now. We see the best we can do, at least in, in this generation, uh, is, to, is to send a little tiny probe, but that's the first step. Uh, there are people that believe that other technologies will come along, that we can, that we can send larger payloads and eventually even humans. Uh, I'd love that idea, uh, but I think that for the foreseeable future, uh, 
you know, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise are probably out of the question. The best we can do is, is sending a robotic probe, and uh, uh, it's really an exciting first step. Okay, bird. There we are, have the bird. Mac uh, uh, Medrock, can Starshot be used usefully to reach the 550 astronomical units needed to use solar gravitational lensing? I can tell that you're a geek. Uh, so am I, by the way. That's a really good question. And just to say, well, what is the gravitational lens point? Well, we just noted a few months ago that uh, Einstein's uh, gravitational waves uh, were confirmed in a rather dramatic way. The, the, the point was is that space is bent by gravity. Uh, the space-time itself. In fact, we see a lot of evidence of this. You can see, you can look out at clusters of galaxies and see that way behind them there were other galaxies that were sort of lensed is what they use. It means that gravity actually acts as a, as an, like an optical lens and bends light. Well, it turns out a, a few decades ago people did a calculation and said, you know, the sun will bend light. Uh, if you get to a, the, the place where it bends it to a focus, you could actually use the sun as a humongous, you know, million-mile uh, telescope lens. Uh, and they did some calculations recently and said, you know, if you could line it up right, you could actually take an image of a planet around a nearby star, but you got to get to this point. Well, the point's pretty far out in space. It's 550 times further away than the sun, which is 550 astronomical units. So we have to put a spacecraft there and figure out how to block the sun. Uh, this is an interesting idea. Indeed, uh, uh, our first Breakthrough Discuss conference in April, this was one of the key topics, and it's a very interesting uh, intermediate step towards actually going to the nearby stars is to, is to use the sun as a giant telescope. Just say bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>